Relax, Recharge, Repeat. And tonight's video is sponsored by Off-Grid Power System. Well, not quite the video, but this parcel is sponsored by Off-Grid Power Systems. Stickers. Bluetooth adapter. Ruby sensor. 32 gig SD card, micro SD card. Victron Serbo GX. And this is everything Mr. Ed Jones from Off Grid Power Systems has donated. Donated to the Off Grid Garage in Sunny Hot Australia. Guys, and welcome back to the Off Grid Garage here in Sunny Hot Australia. Late night show. Cheers. And thank you very, very much to Mr. Ed Jones from the Off Grid Power Systems in, in Delaware, Ohio. That is an incredible donation. Wow! After watching some of my previous videos where I tried to connect several BMSs to the Victron system via the Raspberry Pi, Ed was so incredibly kind to offer me a Victron Serbo GX and want me to do some testing with this one and compare it to the setup in the Raspberry Pi. And he left a comment under one of my videos and offered me this device plus some other goodies like an external Bluetooth adapter because apparently the internal Bluetooth is not that good. And also a 32 gig SD card, a Ruby tag, which connects via Bluetooth to the Serbo GX, a stainless steel isolated cup, a very nice t-shirt. It is, I'm not an XL person. And some fabulous stickers of his company in Delaware. Ed also got in contact with me via email and offered me all these devices here for free and said he hasn't got time to do all this testing and he was glad I'm doing all this testing and he was very happy to sponsor all this and I've asked him several times if he is sure this one is not cheap and he said yeah thank you for all your videos you are doing continue all the testing you are doing with the communication between the Venus OS and the BMSs and Mr. Ed Jones is the owner of the Off-Grid Power Systems in Delaware, Ohio. And he is also a Victron dealer, so um, it is still an amazing donation. I can't believe it. And his company also installs Off-Grid Power Systems, as well as delivering Victron devices and other electrical components to the do-it-yourself community over there. Well, what can I say? Thank you so, so much for all this equipment here. I am really speechless that you have sent hundreds of dollars worth of equipment over here to Australia. So um, I try to mention your company as much as possible in this video here. So thank you very much, Ed. You are amazing. Because um, look at all these interfaces this one has here. USB, HDMI, VE Direct, several um, BMS CAN, VE CAN, VE bus, network port and this is for all the tank sensors tank temperature and also digital inputs we have a relay contact here and a second one a second relay contact amazing and power in is 8 to 70 volt dc so we can connect this one directly to the dc bus power supply cable can bus terminators and these ones are the connector blocks for the terminals with a spring mechanism. Very cool.
then we can have the brand new Servo GX right here in the middle so we can connect the cables all around to this device. Look at our new power wall. Isn't that amazing? Ah, here, here, here. By the way, these openings are for ventilation purposes. What, what else could it be? Okay, guys, I think we have made some very good progress tonight. I um, have installed all the cable ducts here so far and the brand new Servo GX. Um, I'm still speechless. And I guess in the next video we can start already cabling all this gear here. And the, the really insane part is that this main fuse is not included in the smart shunt. So you have to buy a CNN fuse and the original one from Victron is around 100 Australian dollars. 100 dollars for a fuse. So I have just recycled the one we had in the battery 1.0. This is an this is just the 100 amp A and L fuse. And again, this this has exactly the same functionality as the top compartment here of our battery shelf. Look, we've got the fuse options here for all the battery banks. And that's exactly the same as we have in our battery shelf here with the circuit breakers for each battery bank. And we've got our DC battery bus system. And this is basically our vertical bus bar here going through all the battery bank compartments. It's the same, just far more compact. Now we've got our main fuse here. And here in the battery shelf we have our main breaker. We've got a smart shunt. Exactly the same as this one, the smart shunt. And then we have our DC distribution over here, where our load and solar charge controllers connect to. And here's our DC bus system, solar charge controllers, inverters and load. And here in the distribution area, we also have the fuse options for our load and solar charge controllers. Solar charge controllers fused, DC load fused, and the 200 amp big inverter fuses and the main control unit where all the components will be connected to connects to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Internet and provides all the information on the Victron VRM. That is exactly what the Raspberry Pi does in our battery shelf. See here all the solar charge controllers and inverters are connected to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspi connects to our off-grid garage VRM on the Internet. I also have an off-grid garage test which is the second Raspberry Pi we are running here for test purposes with the CAN heads and RS485 adapters. Well, to put this one on the internet, we need um, we need a different name. The off-cut garage, off-cut garage test. Leave your comments down below. What kind of name could we have for our new environment, for our new installation here? Um, I haven't thought about it yet. So maybe one of you has got a good idea how to name our new installation. Ah, uh, damn it. I haven't mentioned the off-grid power system that often. So uh, get in contact with Ed from power, from off-grid power systems here under off-grid, offgridps.com and use the code Offgrid Garage Australia to get a 30% discount. No, no, no the, there, there are no discounts, there are no discounts. I'm, I'm sure if you get in contact with Ed from, uh, from Offgrid Power Systems here in Ohio, Delaware, um, and mention my name, mention the channel here, I'm, I'm sure he gives you a good quote and a good price. Yeah, I have also contacted Zeplos again about the new BMS and the replacement in this battery here and in the other battery so they can actually start communicating. And then we want to hook up one of the CAN buses here, the CAN bus, to our Zerbo GX CAN bus. And we don't need any adapter for that. We just need the Victron. Uh, we just need the Victron BMS to can cable the A version of this cable, uh, something like this. And there, there's no other adapter or something necessary. It, it plugs in directly from this CAN bus here into our BMS can of the Serbo, and it works apparently. Then it just works. 
and this was also one of the reasons Ed has sent this servo over to me to show you the difference between a Raspberry Pi setup and the Servo GX. Even this one costs a lot of money here. Well, I'm not saying it is worth the money. We will see. We will find out. We will test the heck out of this one here and see how good the communication actually works in comparison what we have seen with the Raspberry Pi so far, which was a top. Yeah, so far I'm um, I'm not I'm not convinced that we can actually connect this 280 ampere hour battery pack to our 135 ampere hour battery pack here from what Zeplos has texted me today, because the 135 ampere hour battery can only have a 100 amp BMS, while the 280 ampere hour do-it-yourself kit here can have can have a 200 amp BMS. It seems like they are still not communicating, not even with a new. Oh, this is a, this looks like a lightsaber here. Well, apparently they can still not communicate to each other unless we downgrade the 200 amp BMS here to a 100 amp and then they can communicate. And I told them, you're making this really, really complicated and bad for everyone. If you are developing a new BMS in your house, they should all be compatible to each other. Regardless if it is a 50 amp or a 200 amp BMS, they should just talk to each other. The, the RS485 should just work between all these BMSs. So I guess if they cannot get it right and working, I'm, I'm very close to replace the Zeplos BMSs in these boxes with JK BMSs. Look, I, I don't really mind the Zeplos BMS, but they need to work. They need to talk to each other and the master battery needs to talk to the Victron system. This, this was the whole reason to order these two batteries. And they are still keep talking about connecting the battery to a Victron inverter. And I said, I don't want to connect it to an inverter. This is not the purpose of this whole stuff. I want to connect it to the Victron OS, the Venus OS, not an inverter. So yeah, at the moment, this whole saga continues and I'll keep you up to date, I guess. Okay guys, so far this video from tonight, we have mounted all our cable runs here. We have mounted the Servo GX. Thank you so much, Ed, for your amazing, generous donation. I'm, I'm still speechless. I'm touching it, but I can't believe it. It is here. Whew, what an amazing community we have here. So thank you so much to everyone for your very generous and amazing support here. It is very much appreciated. And guys, until the next video, when we start cabling this power wall here, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. And uh, don't forget to let me know what kind of name we want for our installation here in the VIM. So leave your comments down below, please. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry guys, I couldn't wait until the next video here. I had to test this Ruby tag here. I already pulled the plastic strip out so to to activate this tag here and I just want to see what it does. Welcome friend. I like this very much. There it is. 20.66 degrees. 0.66? Really? <laughs> 60% humidity and 17 movements. What does that mean? How does it detect movement? Is that the tag? How does this work? Oh, 18 movements. It does work. 20. Oh, we will have so much fun with that.